Welcome. This is the lecture on investment appraisal methods. My name is Augustine Intonu, and I'm a consultant with a private wealth fund, and I manage the LSBF uh, MSC program in finance. We're looking at a very important concept, investment appraisal methods. Because if investing decisions are not made, companies cannot generate returns for investors. Let's look at some quotes. The price is what you pay. The value is what you get. It's the same. It's, it's not the same, actually. I may see something as having value, and you may see it differently. I give a quote and I say, if we are unable to invest wisely, shareholders and stakeholders will lose on their investments. What is the question we need to answer? How do I decide where to invest if I have several options, where my money will yield the most effective return? In terms of effective return for risk, in terms of effective return for the actual return itself. The question there is, Making investment decisions, what is the big deal? If we don't make the right investment decisions, we'll generate a loss. Shareholder value will be destroyed and the company might be run to ground. So what are our outcomes here? For the understanding part, we look at the use of investment appraisal tools in making investment decisions. Don't forget, in corporate finance, there are three key decisions. You have the financing decision, you have the investing decision, and the managerial decision. Then our insight is to be able to assess prospective investments using MPV and other tools for appraisal. The MPV is a net present value. We looked at the time value of money and it applies here. If we said that $1 today is not the same as $1 in two years' time, what if we have a, an investment that will give us $20 million in two years? Is it actually worth the $20 million? No, we need to discount it back to year zero to make a decision. So there are two key decision tools in investment appraisal. We have the traditional techniques and we have the discounted cash flow. For the traditional techniques, we have the payback period, which is the number of years or months or days it takes for a project cash flow inflow to equal the project's cash outflow. Average rate of return is an accounting concept to say what is our percentage rate of return for this investment we made in terms of inflow. And the return on investment is simply whatever we generate and the investment we've made. We look at the payback. The payback is the length of time, I've told you, that it takes to recoup a project's cash flow. So how much is the outflow? How much is the inflow? How many years or days or months does it take for the inflow to equal the outflow? The decision rule is to undertake the project if the payback is less than the preset amount of time. What is the preset amount of time? It is the time set by the company. So the decision rule there is slightly arbitrary. It is not set in stone. The company decides what the payback period is. For the payback period, I deviate slightly and I consider the discounted payback. It is the length of time the discounted cash flows inflows, the discounted cash inflows equal the cash outflow. And the decision rule is the same as the traditional payback. Moving on. We have looked at the traditional methods, now we're going to look at the discounted cash flow techniques. For the discounted cash flow techniques, we look at three key ones. We have the MPV, the internal rate of return, and the discounted payback, which we have looked at briefly. We'll start with the MPV. An asset's net present value is the difference between what it's worth and what it's cost. So what it costs is the cash outflow, and what it's worth is the cash inflow discounted over a series of years to today. So most investments, cash outflow happens in year zero, before the investment begins. And the series of cash inflows happen over five, 10, 15 years time, depending on the horizon of the investment. We need to discount those cash flows, taking into consideration the concept of the time value of money back to year zero to compare what the project is costing and what it is worth. If it's a greater than zero, then we decide to invest. As such, the decision rule to undertake in a project is that if MPV is greater than zero, proceed with the project, because then investors have value added for them. So we have an example here, cute and simple. Suppose you notice a rundown house, you're walking down your neighborhood, you notice a rundown house for sale. The price is worth $80,000, the house. As the house stands today, it's rundown. It requires $40,000 in repairs, that's $120,000. The repairs will take you one year to complete, so from year zero to one. Fixed up, you could sell the house for $135,000. But there's an added value. If you're going to live in it, 
then living in a slightly improved neighborhood will be worth five thousand dollars the question is what is the net present value of this investment if your discount rate remember the discount rate from the time value of money is ten percent let's look at the answer the net present value of the project is seven thousand two hundred and seventy three it is seven thousand two hundred and thirty three why because we have an outflow of 120,000 in year zero today. It will take us one year to fix the project, the house. We buy for 80,000, invest 40,000 in fixing it up for one year. And in one year's time, we'll get 140,000. But remember, time value of money. 140,000 in one year's time is not the same as 140,000 today. So what do we do? We take that 140,000, discount it back one period. How do we discount cash flow? divided by 1 plus r raised to the power n. What is 1 plus r? r is 10% and that's 1.1. So 140,000 divided by 1.1 by is actually 127,273. 127,273 minus 120,000 gives us 7,273. Why did we have 140,000? The question you might ask. We had 140,000 because we sold the project, the house, for 135, and the added value for living in our neighborhood is 5,000. If we're not living in the neighborhood, our net present value is 2,727 because we would then have 135,000 in year one, which would discount back to give us 122,727. If we deduct 120,000 from that amount, we get 2,727. We then look at the internal rate of return. The internal rate of return is the discount rate that sets the MPV of the expected cash flows to zero. You're going to see this when we're calculating the cost of debt in the weighted average cost of capital topic, and that will be topic 6.5. The rule is, undertake the project if the internal rate of return exceeds the project's cost of capital. Remember, let's link this to MPV. If MPV is greater than zero, we proceed with the project. Internal rate of return is the point where MPV is zero. So if internal rate of return is greater than the cost of capital, proceed. As such, if internal rate of return is greater than the cost of capital, MPV will be greater than zero. That is the rationale behind this decision. So we have an example. The example we have here is that a project costs $10,000 and is expected to generate cash flows of $2,100 each year for six years. What is the project's internal rate of return? Now you need to use your finance calculator. If you have a finance calculator, you use the third row in on the calculator to do your calculation. Here we have N. N is the number of years. N is six because the cash flow project is for six years. The present value we already have, it's 10,000. Payment is 2,100. Now we link us back again to the time value of money. And the future value is zero. If we Press compute I by Y, we'll get 7.03. The project's internal rate of return is 7.03. If the cost of capital of the company is less than 7.03, then we should project, proceed. But if the company's cost of capital is 10%, then we cannot proceed on this project because MPV will be zero. How do we use the MPV and IRR criteria? It's about time. Most of the MPV and IRR are both valuable guides to making decisions. There are occasions when they may give varying results. When in doubt, if they give you this, the, uh, varying results, please rely on the MPV. The MPV is an absolute value. It's in money terms. $10 is $10. If we say 10%, we're saying 10% of what? Because the IRR results will be in percentage. So always rely on the MPV. We have the profitability index. It is simply the present value of future cash flows divided by the initial investment. It's an index. And the formula is that one plus MPV divided by initial investment. The decision rule says undertake the project if the profitability index is greater than one. The one is the base added. So we have example here that says farmer filter. They are considering two mutually exclusive one year projects whose cash flows are shown below. The cost of capital for either project is 12%. Compute the MPV and profitability index for each project and indicate which one should be undertaken. So we have the two projects, Alpha and Beta. Alpha in year one, year zero rather, will cost $1,000. In year one, it will return $1,200. Beta 
will cost $8,000 and return $9,200. If we discount those cash flows, we have an MPV for alpha of 71.43 and an MPV for beta of 214.29. The profitability index tells us the truth here. The profitability index for alpha project is 1.071, while that of beta project is 1.27. If we have to choose between the two, we choose the alpha project because it has a higher PI index. PI measures MPV per dollar invested. For independent projects, the PI method yields conclusions identical to MPV. However, the projects are mutually exclusive. That is to say, you cannot invest in both. There will be differences in terms of size. In that case, we rely on the MPV again. We come to sum up this topic. We have investment appraisal techniques in terms of traditional values, traditional methods. We do not take into consideration the time value of money. Examples of which ones we gave were payback period, accounting rate of return, and return on investment. And we have the discounted cash flow methods. The discounted cash flow methods are the MPV, the IRR, and the profitability index. This consider the time value of money. The ones that consider the time value of money are considered to be more reliable because there is value in time. Money has value because of time, as we've seen under the time value of money lecture series. Although the traditional techniques have their key skills, the key requirements in traditional techniques is that payback period measures risk. For a company that is not highly liquid, the payback period shows them the level of tolerance. And that's why companies will go for projects with lower payback periods than projects with higher payback periods. Because the further you go into the time horizon, the more unknown and uncertainty you have. Uncertainty and unknown are associated with risk. That is the sum of our lectures. Have a look at the case studies that we have in terms of investment appraisal. Have a look at my MBA and do further readings and practice. Thank you for viewing. And I'll see you in the next lecture.